Welcome to the Fastlane Car. My name is Tommy and I've got a really fun video for you today because we are putting the all-wheel drive system of this Prius through its paces on the TFL roller test. This Prius is the all-wheel drive E model and in this first test, we're gonna get the rear wheels stuck in the rollers on purpose to see if the front wheels can pull us off. On this first test, we're gonna go ahead and put the rear wheels on the rollers. This should be a piece of cake for the Prius, of course, because the primary drive wheels are the front. So I'm gonna go into reverse, gently back it on, and then I'm gonna go into neutral and let the vehicle settle. We've got this little display up here that'll show me where the power's going. So into drive, foot off the brake, onto the gas, Oh yeah, almost a perfect result. So no issues with the rear wheels on the rollers. Now I should explain how the all wheel drive system works on the Prius because it's pretty wild. Here in the front, we have a gasoline engine, a 1.8 meter gasoline engine that develops 96 horsepower and that is paired with an electric drive system. And all of this powers the front wheels. And then in the back, there's another electric motor with no mechanical connection between the front and the rear. However, the rear electric motor is just seven horsepower. That's right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's all the power it can make, which is less than a lot of lawnmowers. However, it does make 40 pound feet of torque. Now the question I've always asked, if the front wheels get stuck, does this little itty bitty motor have enough power to push us off a bad situation? So let's get the front wheels stuck. The second test is gonna be much harder because we are gonna put a lot of strain on that tiny rear motor. So I'm gonna go into reverse. And now I'm gonna back on to our front wheel slip test. So in this test, both front wheels are stuck in the rollers and the rears have to pull us off by themselves. Let's see if they have the power because under 10 horsepower is not a lot, but 40 pound feet of torque, that should do the trick. So I'm in drive, nothing special selected here. Foot off the brake, onto the gas. Come on. So you can see in my display here, it's definitely trying to send some torque to the rear, but not quite enough. So I'm gonna give it another go here, more gas this time. Come on, foot to the floor now. Come on, come on, come on. So the front wheels are definitely spinning. Both front wheels are really spinning furiously, but no action to the rear. So let me try turning off trash control here. We'll give it another go. I think we're stuck. I'm gonna try turning traction control back on because that didn't seem to make too much of a difference. Now let me go into power mode. Let's see if that makes a difference here. Foot to the floor, I'm completely full throttle. Now I'm completely stuck. The little rear motor doesn't have what it takes to get me unstuck, so uh, let me get some help and uh, get off the rollers with a good old fashioned push. All right, Matt, let's do it. So with a little push, we got off, but the car couldn't do it itself. Well, perhaps that's unsurprising that tiny little electric motor didn't have enough grunt to get us unstuck, albeit a little disappointing because the philosophy of it is sound. You see, that little motor is only active at certain times when you're driving the car. So for example, it's only active when you accelerate from a dead stop from about zero to six miles an hour. And then it's active when the front wheels slip up to 40 miles an hour, at which point it cuts off altogether. But definitely a little disappointed. It doesn't have enough oomph to get you unstuck when the front wheels get into a bind. So let's go to a diagonal slip test. This is gonna be opposite corner stuck. Very common when you're out in the snow. Mm -hmm. 
This is the diagonal slip test, so two opposite wheels are going to be stuck in the rollers, in this case the rear right and the front left. This is very common um, when you're out in the snow, out in the mud or sand, but primarily snow in this car. All right, so I'm going into neutral, let the vehicle settle, and this is going to have to force the brakes to actuate the wheels are, that are spinning to send power to the wheels with traction. So I'm going into drive now, um, traction control on, just in my normal mode, make sure I'm in my normal mode, yep we are. And here we go, foot off the brake. Okay, it's definitely rocking it, you can feel the traction control try to get me unstuck. Oh, bummer. I'm gonna give it one more try here with traction control on. Well, we did uh, eventually get unstuck, but that took a lot of work. Well, wow, that took a lot of effort, a lot more than I think I've seen any other car to get us unstuck from that test, but we did. I'm not sure if maybe we slipped off the rollers after we got enough RPM up or what exactly happened. Let me know in the comment section below, but eventually we did get unstuck. Now, it's time to up it up a notch or three, because we're going on to the three-wheeled slip test. This three-wheeled slip test is super tough, so both rear wheels stuck. Front right wheel stuck, only the front left has traction, so that's the one that's gonna need to claw us off of this test. In the reverse. All right, and into drive, here we go. Let's see if we can figure it out. Foot off the brake. It's thinking about it. A lot of throttle now. All right, not great. I'll try turning off the traction control just to see if that helps. Yeah, that's me even making it worse. I'll try turning it back on. What we want is the brake to engage that front right wheel, which will force the torque to the front left, but We were close there, but I don't, I don't think it's gonna happen. Foot to the floor. Yeah. Okay, Matt, you wanna come give me a push? We are super stuck now. All right, we're gonna need more manpower. All right, whew, well, we got off, but it wasn't pretty. Well, that was definitely an interesting result, and I have to say, I'm just a little bit disappointed. Now, I know seven horsepower doesn't sound like a lot for that rear motor, but 40 pound-feet of torque sort of does. It should be enough to give you a grunt out of a bad situation, and I'm not sure it will. Now, the all-wheel drive system on the Prius is about a thousand dollar option, so if it were my money, I might skip the all-wheel drive system and just buy a set of snow tires because that's going to be a lot more effective, I think, when the going gets really tough in the wintertime. Well, as always, this is Tommy with the Fastlane Car. Head over to tflcar.com for the latest and greatest in news, views, and real-world reviews.